Hi, this is Navin Anjanappa. Let us talk about a very interesting situation today. Let's assume you have been asked to drive at 100 miles per hour. Sounds interesting, isn't it? And you might be excited to do this. But then let us consider a situation where you have been given a crappy vehicle that does not have the capacity to even drive at 100 miles per hour. And not just that. Assume that the driver is ineffective, a crappy driver who does not understand the rules and also drives without any care. And the traffic conditions are so bad that you can hardly move the vehicle. Given the situation, do you think you will be able to drive at 100 miles per hour? Difficult, isn't it? But this is what many people expect. That with the available car and with the available driver, you need to reach the destination as fast as possible, even though knowing that the traffic conditions are not so easy. Then, if you have to drive at 100 miles per hour, what is that you need? Basically, you need a, a good car, which has the capacity to drive with that speed or move in that speed, and also have the capacity to manage the speed with a good braking system, control, and efficiency. It is also required for you to have a good driver who is capable enough to maneuver the car at that speed. If you have a good car but an incapable driver, the efficiency of the car is going to go down because you're going to just go ahead and meet with an accident or cannot achieve the full throttle of the system. And you need an excellent driveway. You need a six lane or eight lane highway wherein you would be able to drive without any obstructions. Yes, it is easy to drive at 100 miles per hour provided all these situations are met. Sounds interesting, right? When somebody is expecting you to drive faster in a congested ecosystem, you might be wondering, I mean, does this person even have sense to ask us to drive so fast, knowing that there is a obstructions and uh, incapabilities in the system? Think over it. We'll come back to this. Let's go to the next situation. Let's assume you're playing a cricket match and you are supposed to take up 12 runs per over as run rate required to win the match. Do you think you will be able to do your 12 runs per over? Sounds interesting. But let's assume you have a gully cricket team. A team that is just playing based on how they have watched the others play and they have just practiced on their own. A bad weather condition which is spoiling the game and you don't have a good coach but a demanding manager. Let's assume you have a demanding manager, uh, uh, amateur, cricket players and then the bad weather conditions. Do you think you would be able to score 12 runs per over and win a match? Any sensible person would say no. Think over it. Now let us come to a situation where if you need to win a match with 12 runs per over, what do you need? You need a good team player who understands this goal and who understands the objective of how to play to achieve 12 runs per over. Their capabilities, their strengths and also collaboration among themselves. They have to be self-managing the game as well as their play in order to win the match. You need a good supporting coach, a coach and a mentor who's going to drive you through your weakness, strengths. And not just that, a holistic cross-functional team which is going to make sure that the single focus is always to win the match irrespective of the situations they all contribute towards that one single goal. Now let us come to office. Knowing these situations, 
the moment we enter the office i feel we are we are being in a very wrong position and what is that people tend to get predetermined work to be assigned for a team to complete so there is a management decision that is each team member should complete eight story points per sprint of a two weeks and this is based on one story point equals eight hour calculation basically this is where people go wrong when they have a calculation of efforts into story points efforts are not equal to story points and one story point is not equal to eight hours effort is a scale of measure for complexity of the work that you are working on while efforts are how much time it is going to take to finish a given work item now let us look at this provided let's say you have an average team members that's what most of the organizations have in fact some of the organizations have 30% of their workforce as 0 to 3 years experienced people and hardly a few experienced people are in each team for whatever reasons then there is absolutely no coaching or mentorship to improve the teams continuously yes there is a unfortunate uh, thought process that one team member in a team can go through a training or a certification program or a learning process and the rest of the body, rest of the people are going to follow up with this uh, one person who's been trained for whatever reasons again do you think people are going to work effectively without a coach and mentorship program and then we have a misunderstood or a demanding manager when i say misunderstood the managers are always looking at just one angle deliver 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 rather than looking at it as what it needs to deliver the results now let us look at the context if you need to go ahead and deliver the results in the projects like a car driving at 100 miles per hour or a cricket score of 12 runs per over you need to have a really high performing and self managing team do you need to drive at a higher speed you need to get a good car good driving conditions a good driver and an infrastructure exactly that way you need to have a high performing team a team which is also equipped with self managing techniques and skill set focused on continuous improvement with coaching and mentoring and also the collaborative ecosystem where management is supporting and helping teams to be agile only when there is a management support continuous improvement and a high performing team with self managing ecosystem it is a higher probability that the teams can deliver the results now think about it are your teams expected to deliver higher performance then are you providing an ecosystem that is required for them to do so avoid assigning work based on story points to each team member when the management expects that each team member is going to pick up a certain amount of story points and then start working ron jeffries even the creator of this story points says in his blog that people have misused story points people should avoid using story points to predict how much will be done or comparing the story points with actuals and estimations all these are ineffective ways of using story points story points are a, a number which talks about how much complexity the system is and instead of just giving a number to this you should actually look at breaking it down into a smaller chunks that can give you a better understanding and can be done within a sprint so try to create a product backlog items that are usually doable within a day or so according to the latest definition of done break each one of them into such a small extent that it will be done within a day or so and that way you could just count the number of items that can be completed within a sprint rather than fall into the estimation and story points and the trap of being compared to what was the actual planned and what was actually delivered remember we are in a complex zone 
And unless the management understands that in a complex zone, we can only predict what can be done and it cannot be committed. Unfortunate stuff is people use techniques of forecasting and prediction and the outcome of this forecast is committed, which needs to be avoided in a complex zone. I hope this example of the car driving at 100 miles per hour, the cricket score of 12 runs per over to be winning the match and also comparing it with the organization which needs to win the a good product and deliver a better results needs to consider the infrastructure, people, mentoring and coaching and also the management efforts and support. I hope you have understood a, a very interesting and important point here. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, you can ask an expert series. Here is Navin Ajundapa from 12 Principles Consulting. Thank you so much. See you again in another episode of an interesting question to discuss.